Hello, I'm Lewis Daniels, and this is Transplant the Hub Conversations. Today, I'm joined by Tina B, inspirational speaker, life coach, and the longest living survivor of a heart and double lung transplant in Africa. After experiencing a variety of heart and lung problems since birth, in her own words, Tina has looked death in the eye and defeated it, becoming the sixth person to receive this type of transplant in South Africa. You've been suffering with illness since birth. Could you briefly outline what you've been through and some of the physical and emotional challenges that have stemmed from that? Sure, there's been so much. Um, I think, you know, physically, because I wasn't getting enough oxygen and my heart was under so much strain, I eventually got to the point where I couldn't actually even walk 10 meters. I shaved off my hair because I couldn't, I didn't have the energy to brush it. Um, and, and I'm now talking about end stage, but even as, even as a kid in, in sort of school, I could never partake with any of this sort of running and running games. So yeah, and then as I, as it went on, like I stopped doing PE because I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't breathe. It it was hard. It was hard to be different. It was hard to have a disease and no one else my age that I knew that was suffering with the same thing. It was very difficult. Did that improve once you'd had your transplant? Yes, absolutely, one hundredfold. Um, I have taken part in the Cape Town cycle tour. I have stood on stage in a bikini competition. I have hiked mountains. Um, I've joined the gym. Yeah, like completely 180. Throughout your life, what sort of physical and mental strategies have you found most effective in coping with your illness and maintaining a healthy body and mind? I think, you know, when you're suffering with a chronic, chronic illness or disease, it's all about learning to manage your condition. So managing your energy levels. I often used to plan sort of things for every quarter of the year. So like there was always New Year's to look forward to and Christmas to look forward to. I was lucky to have my birthday in the middle of the year. Things like Halloween and all kinds of other holidays become things that you look forward to. Um, And you think to yourself, well, if I just make it to Halloween or if I just make it to my mom's birthday or whatever the case is, um, I think I think that very much had a lot to do with with keeping me going as having something to look forward to. I think yeah, I agree with you. It's important to really set targets and know where you want to go. You've used what you've been through for good, and amongst other things, your hope and motivation and surgery coach. Could you tell us a bit more about what you do and what sort of impact you've seen it have on other people? So I call myself a surgery coach because at the end of the day, there are so many people out there that need surgery or have been told that they need surgery and they are absolutely petrified. And I remember my surgeon saying to me when I went onto the transplant list, he said to me, Tina, you have to get your mind right because I've seen people that physically shouldn't have made it after transplant, but because their mind was so strong, they have made it through. And on the other side of the coin, there have been people who their mind wasn't strong, but physically they should have made it through and they didn't because their mind didn't want to. Making it to surgery or to transplants and then through is, has got so much more to do with our mental state than we, we will ever be able to realize. So I think that's my job is to prepare people for what's coming and to prepare people for for what's what's afterwards when you're looking down the barrel of a gun and and death is is basically your last option because all your treatment options have ended there is no more pills or surgeries or anything that you can have how do you how do you find hope in that that is my job as far as people that i've helped they they are so grateful they are always so grateful because they just I think it's also about shifting their perspective and facing their fears. Since your transplant, you've set up Tina Be Alive. What led to you establishing it and how has it grown since you started? When I was waiting for my transplants and, and facing death and, and just thinking to myself, what am I going to do? There's no one to help me. And as much as I was seeing a psychologist, my psychologist had never traveled the road I had traveled. She was way older than me. You know, when I was waiting for transplant, there wasn't this 
massive support system like there is on social media these days. There were no podcasts about transplant and there was no one my age. So I felt very alone and I thought to myself, well, if I make it through, I'm not going to let someone else suffer the way I did. I'm not going to let them go through it on their own. And I, yeah, I made that vow when I was sick and, I, and that is basically how Tina Be Alive came about because I don't want anyone to face that on their own. What sort of impact have you seen your work have on your clients over the years? Yeah, I think they've been they've been so grateful and they've been so positive going into a surgery or a cancer treatment or a transplant. And they've all survived miraculously. They've all done really, really well. They've all come out unbelievably well with flying colours. What are your future plans for Tina Be Alive? I think part of part of who I am is showing people that life can carry on even when you have a chronic illness, that that doesn't need to stop you. And I think part of Tina Be Alive is to show people that transplant can absolutely change someone's life and help you to be a serving member of the community. People with transplants can do anything normal people can do. That is the essence of where I want Tina Be Alive to go, is to is to serve and to show that what is possible. And how can people find Tina Be Alive online? So online, I'm all over social media as Tina Be Alive. And my website is www.tinabealive.com. Aside from Tina Be Alive, you recently became a Life Bulb ambassador. How did that come about? And for those who aren't aware, what is Life Bulb? So Life Bulb is basically a patient advocacy and support system for people with chronic illness. Um, transplant life falls under Life Bulb, and it's one of the, the sort of illness areas that they cover. It was started by a lady named Karen who had type 1 diabetes and suffered with, with that for many, many years. Um, and then as a result, she's landed up having to have transplants on top of that. And she comes from a medical background and she realized that there was a massive gap between what the medical services and insurance companies were offering compared to what the, the patient's needs were. So light bulb has stemmed from, from that. Um, so she's created it so that there is dialogue between patients and, and caregivers and insurance companies so that patients can actually get what they need in the way of medication and support. And I really love what they're doing. They really are so um, forward thinking and they are so keen to have conversations with all sorts of people uh, looking for solutions for various chronic illness problems. I would highly recommend Life Bulb and Transplant Life to anyone that is looking for a support system, um, ideas, solutions for chronic illness. What does your work with Life Bulb involve? Creating awareness about Life Bulb and serving people within the community. You know, there's a lot of discussions on the transplantlife.com website where people are talking about insurance companies for various, for various transplant things. People are discussing their medication and, and what's worked for them. And it, yeah, people are even inventing things to, to help life with after transplants or waiting for transplants easier. So it's, it's more about swapping ideas um, and creating those conversations within the community so that I, I can be of service to the transplant community. So many transplant recipients like us want to give something back. And you are through Tina Be Alive and Life Bulb. And you're actually running a fundraiser at the moment. Do you want to tell us a bit more about it and how people can donate? So what was COVID-19 and lockdown and transplants basically aren't happening in my country in South Africa. And obviously all sorts of charities are taking major, major strain the Organ Donor Foundation, the Organ and Tissue Donor Foundation, excuse me, of South Africa have been hit very, very hard. So I am trying to raise funds in honor of the fact that I made 40 years old in June. Anyone can donate 
um, to try and keep the organ donor, organ donor and, and tissue donor foundations going here in South Africa. Finally, this is a question similar to the one I ask everyone at the end of my podcast, Transplants Take on Sport. Do you have any tips you'd like to pass on to the transplant community? I think preparation is key in anything that we do. So whether you are waiting for transplant or you are after transplant, you need to prepare. Whether you are preparing to take part in transplant games or any other sporting event, you need to prepare. There we go. Tina, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure to chat to you. Thank you very much for listening. Please go and check out Tina Be Alive and Lifebulb. I've been Lewis Daniels and you've been watching Transplant Hub Conversations.